All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, my name is Vinny Apicella, and I'm here with you. I am, this is the Sports Wire. This is the most electrifying video and audio podcast in the internet today, uh, both on YouTube and Anchor.fm, uh, which you can also get to with sportswireaudio.com. Either way, uh, my name is Vinny Apicella, as you can tell, and I am here, what I'm here just is for a brief introduction. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had a uh, really great interview with a uh, a group or a couple of uh, fire performers from the Firefly Flow Troop out of uh, Massachusetts. And what I probably foolishly did was I put it at the end of an episode after a 45-minute wrestling news segment. So what I'm going to do now is this is just an introduction that I am going to... Uh, go ahead and just release the interview itself, you know, because I think a lot of the people that just wanted the interview didn't want to sit through 45 minutes of a wrestling segment, uh, even though there is a fast forward button, but, you know, you got to please the masses, right? So what I'm going to do right now is take you to that interview with Ali and Emily from the Firefly Flow Troop. There you go. Have a great day. Enjoy the show. All right. I am here with Ali and Emily, the founders of the Firefly Flow Troop Fire Performers. How are you ladies doing today? We're great. Thanks for asking. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Um, actually just had the power go out so we didn't know if this interview was going to happen today but uh everything worked out in our favor uh, and we're glad that it did yeah uh tropical storm isaiah's i think the name is wreaking havoc in this area but <laughs> having weather cancel or postpone your uh shows isn't something that's new to you huh no not really no we actually recently had a gig that um, with the LED hoops especially, because they're pretty expensive, um, it was raining, so we're not going to take our props out in the rain and ruin them. I don't blame you one bit, and I, and I assume the water would put out the fire in your fire performances as well. Yeah, <laughs> wet wicks do not light well. Yeah, I, I would assume so. All right, so um, you, do, you ladies do do uh, fire performances and LED performances. Where did the genesis of that idea come from? Um, well, I would say first we were just friends who hula hooped together a lot. Um, and then we were friends who spun fire and LED hula hoops together a lot. Uh, and started to have a couple of opportunities to perform. And then really it took off from there. It was around, it was about 2017. Uh, we started as a trio. And then in 2019, due to uh, popular demand, uh, we ended up having a six-member troop now. Oh, awesome. Yep. That's fantastic. So 2019, you expand, you pretty much double in size. Yep. So how do you decide who gets to go to what gig, or how does that, how does that uh, go? Um, it depends a little bit on if there's anything specially requested. For example, we have one girl who's, who breathes fire. Oh, so wow. if that's requested, you know, I, I am not one of the people that can go <laughs> and do that gig. Um, so it sort of, it depends on what's requested, and uh, then we just really try to do it uh, in a fair way. Okay. All the girls put a lot of work into it, so we try to give everyone equal opportunities to perform. That's fantastic. All right, so what got you interested in the LED performing and the fire performing? Now, you did mention before the show that all six of you ladies had your own LED hula hoops beforehand. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what got you in interested in that? Um, well, so we've all been interested in flow arts for probably the last like seven to 10 years. Okay. Um, flow arts is prop manipulation combined with dance, combined with meditation. Um, people, I don't know. So that's like hula hoops, poi, staff, fans, fire. Can you think of any other ones? Um, levitation wand. Yeah, there's all sorts of different props that you can 
sort of dance with and it's really just about art and expressing yourself in a different way so we all kind of had a love for that before we found each other and sort of developed a friendship and then our business through through that that's awesome i, I you know and it's it's funny uh well i actually met you two ladies last weekend or a couple weekends ago uh at a birthday party that you performed at yeah. and i have to say the the performance was fantastic Oh, thanks Thank so much. You. You're very welcome. And I, I was very uh, impressed with the fire eating. Um, <laughs> I, I, and I noticed you had to take a drink of water afterwards. I, I can't assume that tastes very well. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. I just like to rinse my mouth out at, with water after. It's a good habit to be in. It's okay. a little bit safer. You get any of the fuel that may have been left in your mouth out. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Um, but... That, so you guys do kids' birthday parties. What other kinds of uh, gigs do you do you get uh, requests for? Um, we do all sorts of different gigs. Um, anything from you know music festivals or parades. Uh, we've done weddings, adult and kids' birthday parties, um, and we've actually done some community events. And we actually have a community event coming up um, this coming week as well. Really? Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so go ahead. we'll be actually performing. Sorry to cut you off. No, <laughs> uh, we'll be performing at the Plymouth Rehabilitation and Healthcare Center. Um, Emily and one of the other girls in the troop work there. Uh, and so it's been really sad and hard on the residents, not being able to see family members. So we're going to hopefully cheer up some days for them. That's awesome. I, I, I really applaud that. I, I uh, Thank you. I, I know with my grandmother personally being in a nursing home, it's it's tough on them. Uh, it's yeah, tough absolutely. People, especially with the way the visitation is right now. You have to wear a mask. You have to be six feet apart. Yeah, and, it's very sad. And with the people, uh, you know, and a lot of the people in nursing homes are hard of hearing. So when you're wearing a mask, it muffles the sound even more. Absolutely. Yeah. And they can't read your lips either. Right, exactly. Um how has the pandemic affected your your business? Was there were there times where you had to postpone everything and kind of take some time off? Or yeah, yeah. At the very so we actually had a really really busy twenty twenty planned. Yeah, it was going to be our um, busiest season yet. We were really taken off. Yep. Uh, and then of course when COVID hit, all of the fest like festivals and sort of like the bigger events, bigger events obviously canceled. Yeah, canceled or postponed, which. Who knows when at this point that's going to be postponed until. Um, and then we did have a couple of private parties that we had booked ahead of time during COVID, mm -hmm. um, but they were further out. So we sort of uh, worked with the clients and said that we were going to see how COVID went and then touch base at a later date. Um, we sort of stopped doing much of anything and really didn't get together uh, for a couple of months there. Uh, we did a lot of actually online stuff. We did a couple of challenges and tutorials and had the girls sort of get involved with online things as opposed to um, getting together in person. That's really interesting. How, I mean, I, I guess it's just pretty much setting up your webcam and, or your phone and doing your, your routine online. But I mean, how much of a big, how big of an area do you need? Are, is it something that you could do indoors or do you have to be out? I mean, obviously the fire has to we stopped with fire spinning because you do need a safety. So unless you were quarantining with someone, you really can't safely spin fire by yourself. You always need to have a safety present. Um, Emily was holding the blanket. Uh, exactly. exactly. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. So now, which is what I figured, but now to hear it directly from you, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know. We just sort of. We didn't so much do routine, routines. We like to get people involved in sort of creative aspects. So we did a what was called the Don't Rush Challenge. You can find it on our Instagram, which is Firefly underscore Flow underscore True. Um, and that's pretty fun. It was like a, a challenge that originally was a makeup challenge. It was past the brush. It mm -hmm. got adopted by Flow Arts. So that was pretty fun. So we just tried to keep people involved and still having a good time with flow arts, but in a socially distanced and safe way. That is, that's awesome. I, uh, I wish I had known earlier. Now I'm not, not me personally, I'm not on Instagram or Facebook. I'm more on Twitter. Um, do you guys, I mean, obviously you just mentioned you had the Instagram. 
how big of a following have you grown from your use of social media? Um, we have uh, probably about 12, maybe 11 to 12,000 followers. 12,000? 12, I mean, 1,200. I'm sorry, 1,200. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we don't have that um, as much of a following as... Um, yeah, we're a pretty new troop. Yeah, to be we're very new. Honest. Yeah, so. um, we have more followers on our personal accounts than yeah. the troop account. Um, but we're working um, pretty pretty diligently to build up more of a following and put out um, more regular content. It has been hard through COVID, like Ali said, but um, you know, as things are sort of lightening up and we're getting more gigs and doing more community events. Um, we're having more videos and more pictures to share with our followers and fans and stuff like that. Exactly. Well, that's fantastic. And one of my goals to bring you, bring you on the podcast is to get your uh, business out there, your troop out there, get it promoted. So Thank, that, you, Thank so you so much. much. Absolutely. Um, I enjoyed it. I know a lot of people. It's something different, you know, because especially the kids' birthday party, you could have clowns, you could have magicians, but a fire performance or an LED performance. That's something to think it out of the box. Yeah. Uh, we actually do all sorts of different things too. Um, you know, we, you saw the fire dancing, you saw the eating, you didn't see the breathing. We actually do different acts as well. We have fire swords um, that we use in some performances as well. Um, and then we also do choreographed LED dances with hula hoops. And then we also have LED ISIS wings. Um, which are super cool and super fun to play with. Uh, and we're hoping to get other LED props soon as well. Okay. Um, the other things we've done too, which have been really, really fun, have been like we did the parade for the province town for Carnival Week. Mm -hmm. um, and our float actually won, so that was really fun. It was Game awesome. of Thrones themed. Um, Emily was Khaleesi. <laughs> I was a dragon. That was originally they really wanted us. Fun. Yeah, it was really, really fun. Um, yeah, so it was. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so you guys are centered out of Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, how far is your reach in terms of uh, where you're where you're able to go for gigs on a reasonable day? Um, we mostly stay in Massachusetts, but we do get requests in neighboring states as well. Okay. It's been a little different with COVID, you know, but. I'd say typically we travel at most up to about two hours to yeah. a gig. Okay. Well, that's, that's great. Um, so going forward into the future, do you plan, I know you, I know, uh, Ali, you said that you're looking to buy more props and stuff. What oh are, yeah. Uh, what kind of other kind of props are there? I mean, I, this is the first experience of, you know, any kind of fire performing. So what other kinds of props are there? Cause I was impressed with some of them that you already had. Well, there's fire poi, there's fire swords, like we mentioned. Um, there are hollow eating torches, which are a little bit different than the eating torches that we have. They're kind of one step up. Okay. Um, there are fire crowns, um, so oh, sort yeah. of like a big queen's crown, but with flames coming off of it. Oh. Um, there are fire belts Fire well. belts and big wings, big fire wings. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean... You, Fire you skirt, dream it, skirt. they can make it. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have a, like, do you have a company that you specifically go through to buy the props or is it whatever you can find? Um, um, it really depends on the props. Yeah. Some props are like the swords. Those are sort of a specialty prop, okay. um, which we ordered from a company based out of Russia. Um, okay. but mostly, um, you know, we try to shop within the United States. We try to support small businesses. Yeah. Um, we do have one particular company that we like to buy our hula hoop wicks from, but um, we sort of just look into um, the quality and the typically quality reviews. and the yep. reviews from our peers and see what, what is the best deal. And I guess we do typically tend to buy mood hoops in all honesty, because yeah. they have really good customer service. Mood hoops and Synergy Flow Arts yep. are two of our main companies that we use. And that's more for the hula hoops though. The, the, flow, the fire props really differ per prop. per prop yeah. yeah it really depends and we try to kind of buy the highest quality ones as well definitely oh absolutely i would i would definitely agree with that um so what are some of the oddest gigs you had to do 
um, that you got requested for. <laughs> the music video. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> so uh -huh. um, we were requested for a music video, and um, the music video is actually being released tonight, so we haven't even seen one it of yet. Them, one of them is being one released tonight. One of them is being tonight. released tonight. We haven't seen um, any of them And yet. this was months ago. This was this like pre-COVID, COVID, yep. pre-COVID, so it's been a long time. But, um, you know, we showed up with the um, – thought that we would be hula hooping sort of in the background so they were yes they um, requested several themed outfits um for different music videos to which we assumed we would be hula hooping in the music correct. videos mm -hmm. um we used the hula hoops for about 35 seconds and then we ended up doing all sorts of things including Playing in their band. Like playing their instruments. Playing their instruments. I was the drummer. I was a guitarist. <laughs> um, we sang a very interesting song. Yeah. Um, we did. We sang in their music video. We had video. to sing in the music video. Yeah. Um, we put on cat masks. <laughs> we put on cat masks and ran around as cat. We did that, um, yeah. And that's just to name a few things, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so that was probably our artist gig request it we've ever fun, had. But it was very fun and we yeah, enjoyed it, was very, it very so fun. much. We always um, have a good time. And we got to keep the cat masks. So we got that to, was the best part. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Uh, wow. So you've, you've done quite a bit then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's great. So how did... Uh, you said that you know in you, you guys doubled got you guys have six uh performers now in your troop mm -hmm. um did were you all friends beforehand or were, were you kind of just coming together out of mutual interest or how did how did that happen um so like we said ali and i've been friends for a long time mm -hmm. um and so we kind of just sort of picked up new friends along the way to be honest yeah, um, it, was at, it was through the regional burn gig that yeah we ended up picking up such a good core group for the troop yeah we had a gig last summer um for a regional burn um local on the south shore of massachusetts so they built this huge structure and then we did this we were the fire troop yeah we did it. like a ceremonial um choreographed fire performance with all six of us um so we need the point of it, it is seven that, of us at that oh, point. seven of us yeah. yeah we needed more girls so we kind of you know looked into our community and who we had for friends that we knew did it um and, and then, had mutual interest in and like, had mutual interest. Of performing yeah yeah and so we kind of pulled the troop together for that and um after that the group really just kind of took off and started getting busier so it just sort of formulated from that yeah it just made sense to keep the other girls on as the, for the remainder of the troop that's great um how about now you guys you did mention you know needing to have somebody there as a safety holding some kind of a blanket in case a mishap goes on yes to happen have you ever had to use it like um i mean been anything that happened like that so you use it anyway typically to extinguish props like if I for example, that. if someone's new to a prop or they get a little bit tired or they just want to put the prop out, mm -hmm. uh, you can easily extinguish the prop with the fire safety blanket. So we've never had any huge catastrophe. No. Um, but you always have someone there just because, you know. Just to be safe. Just to be safe. Better safe than sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, we've never had any huge mishaps or anything. We've never had to use our insurance either, so yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> I did imagine insurance must be outrageous for something like that. It's not too bad. Okay. It's not too bad, and um, we like to look at it that as long as we're, you know, fulfilling gigs, that sort of pays for itself in the end. So. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Uh, so what do your family and friends think? Like the people that are, you know, that you're close to in your life, how how have they uh, been? Have they been supportive of this, or have they kind of been like, "Oh my God, you're going to set yourself on fire one day"? Um, a little bit of both, I would say. I think at first, a lot of "What are you doing? Absolutely. You're crazy! Absolutely. I don't support this." I got a call at eight thirty in the morning once from my grandmother, who goes, "Alexandra." I just saw you eating fire on the internet. What's this about? And I got a, I got a lecture for about 25 minutes about it. <laughs> then she ends going, 
just don't tell me about it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to know. I think that after we started to get um, some, you know, a little bit bigger of gigs and they started seeing that we're being paid and um, we're, you know, we're professional, we're professional, we're trained, we're insured, um, more support started coming. And once they've seen it a couple times in real life, then it changes from, oh my God, to, wow, that's really cool. You're really good at that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, Was this something that you had set out to do or was something you've kind of fell into? I know, I mean, I know you guys are Um, friends. Low Arts was something I think we all set out to do. Okay. But, and then I fell in love with fire and then sort of taught uh, my friends to spin fire as well. And we sort of just took off from there and looked at each other at one point and was like, we're really good. We should probably perform you know we like doing this we like costumes why not yeah it started very slowly you know we would do one sort of thing for a friend's party and then we finally got our first gig and then we got our next one and next one and it's just you know continually been building up and we've done some outreach some local outreach and we're starting to do more of that as well so things are looking good and I feel like we're on an awesome path so what was your first gig Snowflakes. Snowflakes. Snowflakes <laughs> was our first gig. We got hired for an adult birthday party okay. um, in the middle, uh, I think the end of December. Okay. Uh, in the snow. Oh, wow. So we were, we were snowflakes. Which we was, drove in the snow to get there, and yeah. it was half snowing, half raining, but it held off just long enough for, for us, us to, to perform. perform. And then the ride back was like the scariest, drive we've ever had. But we were had. just so but excited. Then, yeah, we were like, on cloud nine. Yeah, we were just happy to have, you know, been paid for our first yep. real gig and yep. things have just gone up from there. But the excitement has never died. We still are just as excited for each and every gig as the first Absolutely. one. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's great. And you could tell just by your upbeat and, and uh, your upbeat personalities. I find that fantastic. That's one mm-hmm. of the biggest things. You can go to a concert, you can go to a sports event, but if you, and if you see the performers, the, the athletes, not really having that smile on their face, trying, you know, kind of go telephoning it in, you can tell, and that kind of ruins the experience. But I could tell by you ladies, you still enjoy it and you still get that, that excitement, that adrenaline flows. And absolutely, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Yeah, no, that's great. So, was it, was it just you two for your first gig? No, actually. We had a couple other people yep. with us. We had um, four people. Four the people first were gig. with us. Yeah. Um, we had some other, you know, friends, peers with us. Here, hold on. I'm going to take this. Sorry, one second. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I noticed that you were the, uh, Emily, I noticed that you were yeah. the, taking the video uh, at the birthday party that I saw you at. Are, were you a performer too, or do you guys switch off? Or are you kind of like the, the coordinator to be uh, putting it all together? Yeah, so Allie and I, we both uh, do uh, a bulk of the performing. Um, we're both, you know, trained in the fire dancing, the LED. Um, but we all, both also co-direct the troupe. Um, we sort of run different aspects of things. Allie uh, deals more with the clients, and I deal a lot um, – with the social media aspect of things um, and sort of um, getting, you know, projects together and stuff. But we basically work together on everything. Um, So, for example, I um, came as the manager um, for the birthday party that we performed at uh, a couple weeks ago that you were at. Mm -hmm. Um, And then this past weekend, I performed and Allie came as the manager to that gig. So we kind of flip flop. And like we said, um, we try to make it fair opportunities for everyone. So we really just we spread spread the love and share it out. We like to do both things. So. So who was the other performer uh, at the party that I was at? Um, Shayna was the other performer. She, um, she is new to the troupe, um, this past, this past year, um, when we did the regional burn. Okay. That's yeah. Cool. Uh, so what do you guys have coming down the pipeline in terms of, we know that you're going to be in the, you know, helping out the, uh, assisted living center this weekend. Um, yeah. but going forward, what other kinds of gigs do you have? I- I'm assuming that like, do you guys perform like fairs and stuff? And yeah, we do fairs and festivals. Um, 
we had a wedding as well booked for this summer, um, but all of those things um, got postponed. Right. Um, so we don't have really much on our plate coming up, um, but we are doing a lot of outreach. Um, hopefully going to be working with um, an entertainment company soon, um, or like a rental entertainment company soon. Um, just another opportunity for us to um, get our name out there and, you know, a lot of people don't know about what we do. They don't know about our performances um, and they never really know about it until they see it. So exactly. um, right. we're, um, you know, currently in the process of making some brochures. We got the new business cards that we handed out to you a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and we're just doing some different like community outreach things to get our name out there a little bit more. It's been tough through COVID. Um, typically we use uh, the gig salad website, yep. um, but through these times it's just been difficult because not many people are having parties as exactly. they were as they used to be so right. um yeah just trying to find new avenues for um gigs and new opportunities that's awesome i i surely hope that you know this uh pandemic kind of goes away fairly quickly um now you mentioned so your first gig was actually in december um, it was so how, you know, do you guys perform year round or was that like a once in a lifetime type of deal? Nope, we do. We, re we perform year round. We also, we have a couple of great seamstresses in our troop as well. So uh, you can spin fire in any fire safe uh, fabric. So leather, wool is really good for the winter, um, cotton, bamboo, hemp, any of those things. Okay. So we like to kind of just get fabric and then make costumes as we need them. Uh, it's kind of another fun creative outlet that comes along with performing, which is cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I could, and you know, just like any performance, I assume that a lot of work goes into something. It's not just, oh, let's get a song, let's get a, an outfit and go. I assume, yeah. that, you know, the choreo, it's got to be tailored made to every audience. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So when we get a gig, we start typically working on it almost immediately. So how does it, how does like a, a kid's birthday differ from an adult's birthday party? Um, I mean, so it really depends on what they want. Okay. So we did, as you saw, like maybe we probably wouldn't do Moana mm -hmm. as like an adult <laughs> birthday theme. Yep. Um, you know, we might do like a, a little bit of a different soundtrack to it. We might do some, uh, I wouldn't want to say scarier props, <laughs> but we might do some swords with yeah. some, we have some, um, the stuff called splitter, which mm -hmm. creates a sparkler effect when you um, smack two of the props together. So, for oh. example, we do a so – Allie and I actually do a sword <laughs> fight act together, um, which might be a little bit spookier, just a little bit um, – Like we won't be doing that for the for nursing kids. home or um, for children. Yeah, yeah. so we just kind of like maybe step it up a notch, do some crazier tricks that – might not um, appeal to the children so much. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Well, th th that's that's. I would have loved to see that uh, sword fight. <laughs> that that must be awesome to watch in person. It's a good one. It's actually you can you. you I think you have one of the videos of it a little bit, a couple okay. of clips of it. All right. Yeah. The Fourth of July. Yeah. There and and everything. Um, so, what are some of the things you're looking to expand into? Um, you got the fire, you got the LED, are you looking to, um, go into something else or is that kind of what your forte is and you want to stick to what your specialist is? Um, we also do daytime hooping and silk fans, uh, and character work. I mean, we had a great time being the Game of Thrones. Right. Uh, we've also developed like sprites characters. Um, we're hoping to expand in, into stilt walking a little bit as well. Okay. Um, a little bit, uh, a little more circusy stuff in regards to that. Long term, maybe aerial stuff as well, but that's a long, long way off. I assume that's got to have a specialized place. To oh yeah, aerial, yeah, yeah. Aerial stunts, absolutely. Um, have you guys ever done uh, like uh, a Renaissance fair or something like that? Or was is that something that you would possibly look into in the future? I can hear you. Can you hear oh, me? Oh, there Great. we go. We're back. So the okay. question was, have we ever done a Renaissance fair? Yeah. Or is that something you're, you know, you're interested in doing at one point? It's funny that you say that. We sort of got together when we first started to want, want to perform, and we didn't really know where to start. So we thought that we would um, 
or audition for King Richard's Fair, okay. actually. So we emailed a bunch of Renaissance Fairs, and King Richard's Fair gave us an audition. Um, unfortunately, it didn't exactly work out. They wanted to do a trial run, and they wanted us to be there every single weekend. And at that time, a lot of the troop members were working as waitresses, so they really couldn't compensate us the way we were getting compensated working in the city as waitresses on the weekends. Um, sometimes you have to pay the bills, unfortunately. Yeah, that um, was when we were first starting out. Um, and since then, to be honest, we've been so busy with other things that we haven't really had the opportunity to reach out to um, them again or reach out to any other ones. But that's definitely something we'd be interested in doing. Yeah. Definitely up our alley. Um, hopefully get into that uh, or get into one soon in the future. That's awesome. Yeah, that would be great. Um, are, do you have, um, I mean, I know, uh, you, you do do, uh, public, um, uh, gigs and, and stuff that's open for the public. Um, are the, when you do, um, I would definitely like to come check another one out. Uh, one yeah, that's absolutely. a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, diverse than just the fire that you did. Cause I would love to see, you know, some of the LED as well. Uh, besides yeah, definitely. The I have, um, so besides the nursing, the, the assisted living center that you have coming up, uh, do you have any other public um, gigs coming down the pike or is the majority of the bigger stuff been kind of canceled? Before? It's really yeah, been, canceled. Everything's been canceled. Everything's TBA, you know, um, and most of the stuff we've been doing right now has been private. Okay. Um, yeah. The, definitely the last, actually all of the gigs of 2020 have been private. Due to yeah. Right. But that, that's kind of where, where the money is right now. Uh, yeah. At least with the COVID era that we're in. Yeah. Um, well, we I do try to. Oh, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say we do try to film a um, uh, majority of our performances, if not the whole performance. Mm -hmm. uh, usually we like to bring a tripod and set it up and record the whole thing. So usually we do make a highlight reel video of um, each performance, kind of highlighting each of our favorite parts, um, all, you know, made together. Yep. Um, Okay, folks, I am back with the ladies of the Firefly Flow uh, troupe. We did get cut off uh, during our original interview, um, which we talked about uh, how they had gotten their gigs canceled because of weather before. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> that actually, you know, happened here, her uh, tropical storm, Isaiah, or Isaiah, or however they want to uh, pronounce it, came through and knocked out the power here in New Britain, Connecticut, so I lost all power. But the interview was saved, as you just saw. Um, so we're just here to kind of continue, conclude the interview and finish up. We didn't want to leave anything uh, untied. But uh, how was your weekend? Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, I was on Cape, so that was kind of nice, visiting some family. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, and Emily, how about you? My weekend was good, too. Yeah, I just relaxed and um, hung out on the lake and... Soaked up some sun. It was a good time. <laughs> what about you? Uh, I worked. <laughs> I work at a hotel, and due to all of the the electric uh, going out in Connecticut, we were swamped with uh, people from Eversource Energy coming in from uh, all over the region to uh, descend on Connecticut to restore power. And uh, yeah. as of now, there are still over 100,000 people without power in Connecticut. Oh, my god, That's horrible. That is terrible. It really is. Uh, but I, we want to at least come back and just kind of uh, go over some just closing stuff about your social media and uh, how people can get in contact with you. And um, so what social media are you on? I know you had mentioned that most of it is your personal pages. You really haven't gotten that group following yet. Um, but what kind of uh, social media do you have? So we have uh, an Instagram account and a Facebook account. So you can find our accounts by searching Firefly Flow Troop on both of those um, social medias. Um, and then we're also, um, you can contact us um, through email, okay. which is um, uh, fireflyflowtroop at gmail.com. Okay. And so I'll our definitely Facebook provide. and our 
Instagram have a lot of, um, you know, videos and pictures and it's way, ways for our fans to stay up to date with what we're doing and, you know, what new things we have coming up. Um, and then our, our email is sort of for people who want to reach out and find out more information about what types of performances we do or bookings. Pricing and questions. Pricing questions. Of, yeah. yeah. And okay. we additionally do have a gig salad as well where you can find some of our past performances. That's gig salad? Yep. Okay. Um, I'll definitely have to, I've never heard of that before, so I'll definitely have to look that up. It's a booking website for performers. So like if you were looking to hire a musician or some, a face painter for a kid's birthday party, a fire performer. Mm -hmm. uh, really? Yeah. That's yeah. where you would go. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. We met, I believe, um, was we were booked through, through salad. salad. Yep. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I did have a couple more, one, at least one more question. Um, the LED performances that you do, do those yep. have to be specifically done at night so you can see the lights? Because I know the fire yep. you can do during the day, obviously, but the LEDs. It's really a nighttime thing, yeah. Yeah, the lights don't really come out um, in the daytime. Mm -hmm. um, so the darker it is, the better. <laughs> what would you say would be more popular right now for you, the LED or the fire? Fire's always been more fire, popular. Yeah. It's a crowd pleaser, for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, but LEDs great. are, we typically offer as a great alternative if there's some sort of uh, problem where you couldn't have a spin fire. There are, you know, laws through the town and if you're doing it on public versus private property and stuff like that. So it's a good way to sort of give a fun light up event and mm -hmm. add some flair uh, without adding. It's also a little bit cheaper in price, to be honest, because, <laughs> really? okay. fire, yes, because fire spinning takes you need a safety. We use fuel to do it. The props need maintenance. There's a lot more that goes into a fire performance oh, that than makes there sense. with LED. Okay. Um, have you been contracted for any um, high profile or celebrity events yet? Uh, not yet. No. <laughs> we are very, ha we're again, very new and mm -hmm. we're very happy and comfortable right now as sort of a fun backyard event entertainment. And okay. we haven't really moved to the level of corporate just yet. We have been booked for weddings and things like that. Um, yeah, but not not many um, high profile or celebrity events. <laughs> yeah, I would say probably the most high profile was Carnival Week in yeah, Provincetown. Yeah, we did the Carnival okay. Week for Provincetown. So that, that was that was very That was cool. a lot of people. A yeah. lot of people. That was probably the biggest, you know, crowd that we've ever performed in front of so i think like a hundred thousand people flock to provincetown for that weekend wow. so yeah well wow, that, that's awesome that 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 would really build up your following a bit yeah <laughs> good um well i wanted to thank you ladies for coming on i i truly enjoyed the performance uh that i saw and getting just to talk to you you guys are definitely happy and upbeat and uh i would thoroughly recommend anybody hiring you in this area. Uh, oh, thank you so much. And thank you so much welcome. for having us on. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely. And um I will I have shared your business card on Twitter. I will definitely and I and you guys can share it on your Facebook and social media platform. Um I think we already have. Yep. Yep. <laughs> very good, very good. Um and I do have some friends of mine that I could have share as well. So we're going to get your name out there. We're going to get your uh, business out there and try to help uh, get you get you ladies to the next level. Aww, thank you, thank so, you much. so much. It's been You're a very pleasure. welcome. Well, again, I'm speaking with Allie and Emily from the Firefly Flow Troop, uh, fire and LED performers uh, based out of Ma uh, Massachusetts. Uh, but I want to thank you ladies for coming on. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll check in momentarily uh, every so often and uh, sporadically yeah. and have you guys back on. Absolutely. That awesome. sounds awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so You're, much. You are very welcome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our two-part uh, interview with the Firefly Flow Troop, um, fire and LED performers. Um, it's been a long episode today. I know. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, and as you saw, we did get cut off because of Tropical Storm Isaiah. But I want to thank you all for watching and listening. And next week we'll be back. Uh, no interview as far as I know right now. But again, thank you. My name is uh, Vinny Apicella. 
You can follow me on Twitter at ZAppicellaSWE. Follow me on, um, follow Sportswire on Twitter at Sportswire Audio. And then you can go ahead and uh, subscribe here, youtube.com slash SportswireSWE. And then follow on anchor.fm slash Sportswire Audio. Um, go to sportswireaudio.com. Email me, sportswireaudio at gmail.com um, with any questions or whatever you want. Maybe requests for interviews that I could try to get. But thank you all. Have a great day.